All right, while main roads were cleared and salted after snow on Christmas Day and more overnight, folks were busy dealing with all of that snow today. From plowing to shoveling, snow removal was the theme of the day for many, including lots of folks who have to shovel out their cars after getting plowed in. Mike, how was it dealing with the snow for you? Were you rushing off at all today trying to clear off the car or anything? Well, let me tell you this, Sean. I uh, spent so much time having to clear my car and get everything ready to head into work that I walked out without a dress shirt. So, uh, Sean, you were kind enough to <laughs> give me the one literally right off your back. So if you've noticed, my dress shirt is a little long in the sleeves tonight. Maybe not quite as uh, <laughs> fitting as normal. It's because I'm wearing one of Sean's. Hey, but this is what we do for our coworkers here at New Center, Maine. We we're really we really are friends. Hey, we go above and beyond, and that's that's all part <laughs> of it. I hope that everybody had a great holiday uh, yesterday and is enjoying the holiday season. We had some festive snow to freshen things up a little bit across some parts of the state. Cumberland County was the winner with this one. Um, I, I was impressed to actually see reports of four inches because I kind of figured that that was like the uppermost limit we could see. I expected it more to be kind of a two to three inch event, but Gorham came in at four inches, Standish at 3.8, but things fell off pretty quickly. Westport 2.3, Durham came in at two inches on the nose, 1.8 inches in Farmington, 1.7 inches in Union. So certainly not a blockbuster event, but this was never supposed to be a big snowstorm and we haven't really added much to our snow so far this season to many of our climate locations across Maine. Only at 8.3 inches for the season so far in Portland, 9.9 .9 inches in Bangor, 30.2 inches so far in Caribou, which is where we're actually still pretty close to average. It's possible that things are going to change, maybe even in a big way, as we get into the start of the new year. But leading into the new year, things are fairly quiet. Right now across Maine, not much going on. We've got some lingering flurries here, and Burlington, Vermont, into the Champlain Valley actually dealing with a little bit of extra snow. I'm going to zoom in a bit and talk about what a lot of these areas are seeing across northwestern Maine. Uh, Eustace down to Rangeley to Rumford. Very, very light snow falling right now. Weld and back to Bethel along parts of Route 2. It could be slick. Farmington, Chesterville to Jay and South. Probably not going to see quite as much out of these lingering flurries. Same idea along 201 down to Skowhegan. Lingering flurries, maybe a light coating on the roads. I do think black ice could be an issue tonight, but as clouds begin to clear, uh, we should see temperatures, especially across central and northern Maine, drop back down into the teens tonight. At the coastline, more like the 20s, although we could keep just a little bit of wind around into the morning tomorrow. I don't expect wind chills to really be a big, huge issue. By 9 o'clock Monday, we're back to sunshine. Tomorrow is actually a pretty nice day for December standards. We make it into the low to mid 30s under partly sunny skies. And then Tuesday, we have to watch for another weak system to roll in. So this is 1 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. We've got snow showers falling to our west across parts of Vermont and New Hampshire. This weak system comes through. We get some snow showers that last until about 7 or 8 in the morning for Bangor. They'll be wrapped up completely for Portland and Western Maine, and these will move uh, down east maybe intensifying briefly, and that introduces a bit of a mixing issue at the coastline into the early afternoon. But I don't really think that we see much accumulation out of those. It's mostly just snow showers that are kind of around. High pressure and control tomorrow. Here's our weak system, and this is actually where the pattern gets a little more complicated because there will be another storm system forming out by Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, Iowa. And this actually could even lead to a little bit of severe weather in the central part of the United States. And then this second wave of low pressure moves toward us on Wednesday. But I think the storm track is just going to be to our south, which means that Wednesday we end up under the clouds and maybe we have a couple of extra showers on Thursday. But my focus beyond this is going to shift all to the weekend. And the reason for that is because we have what is arguably the most impressive signals for a storm somewhere in the northeast coming up into next weekend. So far this season, we've been fairly quiet, and that's all thanks to the jet stream. And the jet, the jet stream is what holds the uh, keys to what to expect next weekend. So you've got this big dip in the jet stream through the beginning of the week. Even by Wednesday, it's still centered mostly across the western United States. Cold air spilling in behind this across uh, big sky country in Montana, the Dakotas, and south toward Colorado with ridging across the southeastern United States, warmer weather expected here. And this big dip in the jet stream starts to get bigger 
and wider and gets dislodged from the western United States sometime in the Friday to Monday time frame. And as it does so, we see the storm development zone shift to be somewhere in the mid-Atlantic. And anybody who likes winter storms in the Northeast knows that you want to see a low pressure either form and uh, move through the Great Lakes and end up to our south or form off the coast of the Carolinas and move up the coast. But given the current forecasts, we'll see some storm development somewhere with a storm track that certainly favors somebody in the Northeast getting something from this. Further north, we could be talking about rain and mixing. Further south, it might miss us entirely. But there's always that chance that we end up in the jackpot zone and we kick off 2022 with a big old snowstorm. Plenty of time to figure that one out, though. Seas two to four feet tomorrow. North wind 15 to 20 knots becoming northwest a little later in the day. Small crafts are in effect uh, in about 40 minutes until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Water temperature still impressively 48 degrees. A few flurries on Tuesday, mostly cloudy Wednesday. Chance for snow showers on Thursday inland. I think at the coastline, it's probably going to be mixed. Um, and then as we get into Friday, a couple of lingering flurries, no big deal. But there it is, Saturday, increasing clouds, and we're watching the storm potential Sunday. Sean, this has not been a very busy winter for us, all things considered. I do think that as we get into January, that looks like it's going to change. I don't know. Yesterday certainly felt kind of busy for anyone that had to be out on those roads. But it's yes. nice that we do have a slight break coming our way. Yeah five days of relatively quiet weather and we as the weather team can focus all of our energy on what's going on next weekend. Awesome, Mike. Thank you so much.